Hello. Welcome back to another Try It Tuesday. Welcome to Crafts at the Clinton Public Library. Today I'm going to show you how to make an old toy, an uh, old-fashioned toy, um, but it is also very cute and very fun. We're going to be making button dolls. Um, the, this one is uh, comprised of buttons. It does have a couple of beads uh, to set off the hands and the head. The feet, though, are indeed buttons. There's a round shank button. I've collected buttons since I was quite a young child. My mother gave them to me to play with while she was sewing, and uh, she had showed me how to make these. When she was a young girl, um, they made button dolls to exchange uh, with friends when they were learning to sew. And uh, that way you got a variety of buttons to have available in your sewing basket. Um, Buttons come in every shape, size, color, and material. You can get wooden, metal, plastic, shell, bone, um, and I'm sure some, and metal. Um, I'm sure people have come up with other things that I unfortunately don't have in my collection. Um, the button dolls are quite easy to make. And there are a few um, little tips and tricks that I will tell you about. This is a blow-up schematic of a way to make the button doll. Uh, you start with two lengths of thread or wire. Um, one goes up one side and continues up, makes an arm, and goes up through the head and hat if you use it. The other goes up the other side. Um, and this will give you a shape like I made where the arms are set off from the body and um, are somewhat movable. This schematic shows a very similar one. You would still be beating up the legs and up the body and the arm, but instead of having you, when you run the thread back through the arm, instead of having it separate at the neck, you would have both threads coming out the center and the arms would touch in the middle and then the threads continue up through the head. Either one works, either one is great. As far as what materials you can use for the thread, um, there are quite a few available. I personally prefer a waxed dental floss. Um, it doesn't have to be an expensive floss. I bought this one at the Dollar Tree. Um, you get 115 yards, which is more button uh, dolls than you would make in your lifetime, probably. Another item you can use is a fine floral wire. Um, it's very thin and very flexible and easy to work with. It is a little bit more difficult to use um, to tighten uh, the buttons up as you finish the, um, the doll, but it can be done, although I would recommend a, a pair of pliers or a needle nose pliers to help you get the pull that you need because it is also a little bit slick. You can use a covered, uh, plastic covered wire you can use embroidery floss, although if you are going to be using smaller buttons uh, like this that have a smaller hole signature, you might only want to use three strands instead of the full six on the embroidery floss. If you're going to be using large buttons for most of your doll, um, you could even get away with using yarn or in some cases, a um, pipe cleaner. Um, to make your um, doll. Uh, so that gives you the foundation and support for uh, setting up your beads. Um, where do you, are your buttons rather? Oh, so where do you get your buttons? Um, this is one of about four or five jars I have. I've been collecting most of my life. I have some very special buttons um, that have great uh, either personal or sentimental value to me. I keep those in a special jar. 
I like to fill the jar with all sorts though because I can use it kind of as a seek and find. If I'm looking for a particular button, it's noisy, but it's fun to do, and kids love to play with it. Before I started this project, this jar was almost full. I liked, uh, if I'm doing a sewing project, I like to go through my buttons and put matching buttons together on a pin or a string so that I would have them um, if I needed multiple buttons for a garment. But when I was sorting to um, prepare to do the button doll, instead of going by color or the design of the button, I was going by size. I had a large collection of these very small bags, so I would sort the buttons, and no matter the color, um, and if they were their size, I would put them in a bag. If they were slightly larger, I have a slightly larger bag, um, and on, so on, and so on, up through large and, indeed, very large buttons. Each button would have a different place in your doll. I prefer to use a very uh, smaller button for the arms, slightly bigger for the legs. And depending on the design I'm making for the doll, uh, like this one, I made it a girl, so she kind of has a skirt and dress look to her. So I have graduated size buttons for the body. I uh, use, often use a bead um, or a wooden bead for the head, and you can even um, draw a face if you so desire. Um, you can make a hat, uh, just a simple flat hat like this one. You can leave the hat off altogether, or you can stack multiple buttons and make something like a stovepipe hat. Um, if you are interested, you can even buy certain buttons um, that you can string on that would look like a cowboy hat, a baseball cap. Um, buttons come in all shapes and sizes. I prefer to use what I have rather than purchasing something special for a project. Okay, so now to uh, show you how to start. For a button doll this size, you would want to start with two strands of at least 20 inches of embroidery floss. I usually guesstimate and I prefer to guess longer over shorter. So you, you do one to the length that you like. You hold those ends together and you run your floss until the second piece is the same length and you snip it. You would do the same thing if you were using wire. As I mentioned, um, when I was making the button doll I did, I used a shank button. A shank button is one that instead of having holes through the flat of the button, it has a hole at the bottom of the button. Sometimes uh, this is accomplished with plastic or a metal shank. Um, this is an ex example of one that has a uh, more prominent plastic shank. It's a pretty blue um, flower. And I'm on a metal button, it's often a solid melted or made with the button shank. Some are a wire shank that's inserted with a plastic cap on the back. <clears throat> if you are using the plastic caps, um, you want to be sure um, that it is still very firmly attached to the button. You would hate for it to fall off once you've gotten your doll made. I, I like to use the uh, shank buttons um, and the way you would work is you would just start stringing and put that in the middle of the strand and then you would go to 
the buttons you're going to be using for feet. And I'm going to use slightly larger than I normally would so you can see it better. And then this button, as you can see, has two faces. There is an indentation on this side and the coloring is pale. On the back side, it is smooth and flat and shiny and the color is darker. You can choose whichever side you like. This is a four hole button. Um, let's see, there we can see it. And you will want to go through buttons that are directly opposite each other. Uh, you, uh, you get a different effect if you use buttons that are uh, side by side. And the method I like to use to start is to put one or two buttons on, pulling both strings through at the same time. That gives me a good established base. And then you pull it all the way down. You would then uh, attach your next button. If you like, and sometimes it does go quicker, you can remove one string and string all of your buttons um, through one hole only until you've gotten the length that you want to use. If you would like a long skinny leg, uh, you can put uh, 10, 12, 14 buttons. Uh, if you like a shorter leg, uh, similar to what I did with this one, I believe I have nine buttons on the leg, not counting the foot. Um, uh, you make the length what you like. After you've gotten all of your but the buttons on the strand on one side, you would come back, starting at the bottom again. And at this point, since there's nothing else on the string, you can move things around and leave lots of gaps. You would come back and you would insert through the other hole and just let them drop. They will naturally settle in a nice pile. One thing you don't want to do is twist the string as you're doing it um, because that will um, show up and move your uh, buttons a little bit wonky. A second way you can start if you don't have a, a shank button or a bead that you would like to use at the bottom, you can just start with a button. Uh, if you're going to want the wire or the thread that you use to be prominent, you might want to start with a four hole button and to uh, get started, you might want to, you can either just go through two holes and pull it, or you can do one and then go through the other two the other direction. And that gives you what I think of as a footprint on the bottom of your, your doll. And so, the bottom of their foot would have the nice little cross going through all four buttons. You would then even out, always keep your strings even. And if you need to loosen uh, to, get, to get them to go evenly, uh, that's always an option. And you want to try to keep them as even as possible because you will need the equal length the higher you get on their button. As shown in the diagram, you will continue up the leg with just uh, the two, the one length of cord in two strands. You will then do the other leg in a similar manner. Once you've gotten them, the legs equal and as long as you like, that you will join them and start going through the larger buttons on the body. And you will make the body as high as you like. Uh, when you, your body is as high as you would like to go here, you then still divide the cords the same as they were at the beginning. As you can see on the diagram at the bottom, it lists the cords as A and or, sorry, um, as A and B on this side, C and D on the other side, and they follow up all the way through the doll until you get 
past the head and hat, uh, whichever you're using. And uh, when you get finished with the body, you're going to use only half of the strand to run for the arms. The arms are created much like the um, leg, except you start at the top, you go down, you end with the hand. And the hand can be another button with an X on it or just a plain two-hole button. Um, I used a small bead um, that I thought was rather pretty and would look cute on the doll. Um, and it I just ran through from side to side with the bead and run the, ran the string back up the other side of the button. As you can see in this schematic, they used bells for the feet. They don't have to be the jingle bell round ball. Um, they can be um, the more bell-shaped ones. You can use that here. I do have a couple of photos that I found on the internet of um, other um, button dolls. Uh, some have spools for a body. That's always an option. You can also, instead of using buttons, if you don't have a collection of your own, you can use beads. Um, the perler uh, fuse beads, the little small round ones, are always um, easy to work with. You just need to make sure you have something on the bottom, whether it be a bead turned sideways or um, a button or even a washer um, that you have at home um, out of the toolbox to keep the beads from totally coming off of the strand. This is a, has an example of the crossed feet. Um, he, in this example, the uh, button doll is actually holding items. This one has a thimble and this one has a, a sewing needle. Um, they don't always have to be dolls with arms and legs. You can make snowmen, you can make Christmas trees, you can make Santa Claus. Uh, your imagination is your limit. Going back to the original schematic, once you have finished the two arms, you join um, the thread from the one side with the other one that came straight up the body and do the same on the other. And then you will want to place a neck button. Um, before you put on the head, you need to decide on whether you want to have this neck riding freely above, in which case you have a bit of a gap from the arms. You can pull um, very, very tightly, and that will give you the solid arm across the middle with the head, or the head and the neck sitting on top. On the one I did, I made sure that there was enough slack that I could bring this neck button down uh, as close to the body buttons as I could. To keep it there and well anchored, I tied a square knot on top. It's not bulky and uh, it keeps the button much further down on the neck without it sliding up to the head. You then just run all four strands through a bead or um, if you can find them, round half buttons that have a hole all the way through. Um, and then if you decide to put a hat on, you can go straight through and all of your strands come out on top. At that point, you can uh, just tie them with a square knot and hang it or attach it to a package. Um, you can uh, kind of double it through a few times so you have a thicker cord. Uh, and I would use a heavier weight cord um, to make the doll and attach a key ring or an, a loop and um, uh, you could even use a little alligator clip 
so that you can change its location quite easily. You can, like I mentioned before, add them to packages. Um, anytime I'm giving a, a gift to a friend of mine that I know is a sewer or a craftsperson, I like to um, make a small button doll to either attach with a ribbon with the ribbon on the packaging. Um, it's much more useful than a bow, and uh, they're usually quite happy to get the extra buttons. If I make a garment for someone, I always make a button doll with any extra buttons that would match the garment or um, complement the garment. And I make a small button doll for that, so they always have extras if, in case a button should get lost. If you have any questions, feel free to um, mention them in the comments. Uh, there should be an attachment that will come with the two schematics um, for uh, the layout of the button doll. If you look online or on Pinterest, you will find uh, designs of all sorts. Uh, you can just look for button dolls or button crafts and they will um, show up quite readily. I have had this little button doll. It was a gift to me when I was a teenager. And believe me, that was many years ago. Uh, it does have a soft um, stuffed body and head. Uh, at one point she had hair until one of my cats got a hold of her. Uh, she now lives sitting on a shelf. She has a nice little fur trim, but she does have button legs. An interesting thing about her legs is there are small wooden beads in between that I like to think of as the joints of her leg. So we have an ankle, a knee, and the top of her leg joint. If she had button arms, you could do the same thing with a shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist. Um, so that's just another way that you can change out the look and the feel of your button doll. I hope you've enjoyed this craft. Um, I know I enjoyed making the samples. And um, I hope you uh, have the chance to use whatever you may have at home, be it beads, buttons, macaroni noodles. Um, everything can be turned, or everything that is round and has a, a hole through it can be turned into a button doll or a bead doll, whichever you prefer to call them. I hope you enjoyed the craft and tune in next week for another craft from the Clinton Library.